Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. October 30th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. What is the biggest news of the day? Gangs of youths hold up families at Great America. No description of gangs. A hundred people, mostly teens. Again, no description of the teens. I suspect that they were all young priests and rabbis on an outing holding people up. And then they uh, beat people up, stole their wallets and phones. You know, rabbis and priests do that because that's what you have to assume since they're covering up any description of the teens. Got punched in the face, one visitor wrote. Park officials did not immediately return phone calls Monday. You realize there's a crime spree in the San Francisco area. Did you know that? Did you know liberalism is the most crime-inducing political philosophy on the planet? Did you know that you cannot walk in San Francisco without stepping on human feces? It is dried, of course. I Don't get me wrong. But there's human feces all over the downtown financial district. And, of course, there's plague now spreading. There's hepatitis spreading. But don't tell the city fathers and mothers they're too busy robbing the treasury at least that's what i think now of course i'm only a talk show host that doesn't exist it's now become that a gang of youths you know what that's an acronym for a gang of youths held up families at a great america amusement park and there was no description of the gangs by the vermin who run the san francisco newspaper i'm suspecting that the gang of youths were all jewish and christian youths on a Christian outing, and they held up normal families uh, with their children. That's the only guess I could make as to why they're covering it up, because they want to make certain that Jews and Christians are protected here in San Francisco. One man or a few men stood up to the gang youths as their wallets and phones were being stolen in front of their children, uh, and he was punched in the face. Now, where were, the, this is a side note, where was the security at California's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara while these gangs were assaulting families. Answer, they were working with the gangs of youths. Why, that's the same reason Best Buy went out of business in Sausalito. That's who they hired for security. The gangs that were holding up, that's my guess. Can't prove it. So it starts with Manafort. No one knows who he is. He worked for Trump for three minutes. And he's indicted for things that have nothing to do with the Trump. We don't know whether he did them or not. We know they broke his door down. They used Gestapo tactics on him, which the left applauded, incidentally. And that was before Weinstein. That was before Halperin. That was before Spacey. But very soon, the left will come to understand that a fascistic government, no matter who is behind it, is not good for anyone. And then later in the day, another bombshell. Podesta resigns from his lobbying firm. Now you say, well, who is Manafort, who is Podesta? That's exactly the point. The average person out there does not know who Paul Manafort is. They don't know who Tony Podesta is. This is all in-house gossip. It's uh, Dem Repub, Repub Dem. They get the guy. They did Clinton. We They indicted Clinton. They impeached him. Nothing happened. So now we're going to get one of theirs. This is the way politics have devolved in America. I feel as though I'm watching the Ukrainian parliament itself. You know, one of the things I used to like about television when they showed uh, international news was the Ukrainian parliament when they beat each other up in Ukraine while wearing suits and ties. At least there was entertainment value. Why is there no such sport here in America? Why are they so polite to each other when they're stabbing each other in the back, I wonder? No one knows who Manafort is. No one knows he worked for Trump, uh, campaign manager, for three months. No one even knows who Podesta is, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman. And I ask today on Twitter, will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence and against whom? No kidding. They used fascist technique, techniques, broke his door down, woke him up in the morning, seized his records. They indicted him as I said they would. We all knew that was coming. Now what? 
the next in the middle of the day, Tony Podesta, founder of the Podesta Group, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman Johnny, resigning from his lobbying company. Why? Because Tony Podesta and his lobbying firm were subjects of a federal investigation by the same special counsel, Robert Mueller. Okay? And the Podesta Group was one of several firms that worked in a campaign called the European Center for Modern Ukraine. The campaign was led by Paul Manafort and prompted Ukraine's image in the West. That's not a bad thing, is it? So, in other words, both Podesta and Manafort worked for Ukraine. Isn't that interesting? Now, you do know that Obama meddled in foreign elections. He meddled in the Israel election. That's a well-known fact with some vermin from New York City running opposition against Netanyahu. Obama meddled in the elections of at least three nations, and we hear nothing about it. But I, I'm telling you right now, I have a very good instinct for what the people out there feel, what they want to think about. They don't care about any of this. Do you think they really care about Mueller? Do you think they care about this guy who is like a Dracula right now? I know he's a he's a revered American legislator. He ran the FBI. He's clean as an Eagle Scout. Right. Great soldier. Yes, he was all of that. But once they become political, all of their good deeds of the past seem to dissolve. Will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence? That's the object. How can we speculate on what he's going to do? He worked three months for him. Now they indicted him on nothing to do with the campaign. This is what happens in a Stalinist government. You think that this is kosher? You're wrong. And I don't really care how fair-minded people are saying, um, whatever his name is, the DA. I don't remember his name. I'm supposed to know his name. Like, Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. That tall guy. Uh, he's not being fair because once they open an indictment, they can go anywhere in it. They were, they were investigating the Russia collusion story, right? But they found nothing, so they got him on something else. All right, fine, but what does it have to do with Donald Trump? Nothing, but the vermin in the media already made a linkage. The linkage is already Trump's campaign manager indicted. Well, on what, though? This is how Wolf Blitzer uh, thrives. This is how they thrive on innuendo and smear. They're worse than you can imagine. I wanted to go to the most fundamental question of what is freedom. Because we keep hearing the term bandied about by conservatives, which is they're selling freedom. Free freedom is their, is their stock and trade. That somehow they know what freedom is. No one else ever heard of the word. It was not invented before they came along. No one ever heard of freedom. No one knows what freedom is. They got the book on freedom. No one else knows what freedom is. So I'm going to ask you, what is freedom? Because if we are a free nation, as we think we are, if we are the freest nation on earth, then why are we enslaved by drugs, pornography, and other addictions? If we're so free, then why are there so many drug addicts and alcohol addicts? If we're so free, why are we so addicted to pornography? And then I keep hearing that if you're really free, you're anti-government. Really? Is that true? So you want anarchy now? Who do you want running the streets? The criminal gangs? Well, they say, no, no, I don't mean free of all government. We need the police. Why, well, we love the men in, in blue. Why, well, we support them. Do you? What else do you support in government? Do you support red lights, yellow lights, and green lights on the highway and stop signs? Why, yes, we support those things. Oh, so you support that. Uh huh. Well, do you support anything else in the government? Well, yes, but we believe in limited government. We're anti-big government. We are, uh, we are the freedom-loving Americans, the patriots. We're the great Americans, and the others are all bad. Okay, so what do you mean you don't believe in government? Certainly you have to have a limited government, don't you? Well, if you have a limited government, so you agree that there needs to be some government. So if you agree there has to be some government, we have to decide as the governed what we want governed and what we want controlled. That's the real question, Plato, isn't it? Yeah, so therefore, uh, Glaucon, what do we do next? Well, Glaucon says... What we have to do next is arrest all the pornographers and ban all pornography and seize all the assets of all the pornographers that they have accrued over the last 30 years, even if they've hidden the money with their children, grandchildren, grandmothers, or in the Cayman Islands. Seize all of their money, use all of the money for pornography rehabilitation, and put the rest of them in prison for the rest of their lives. I know you're applauding inside your hearts. Now we'll go down the next step. What do you do about the drug addiction problem? Well, you could, you could spend money on treatment from today until tomorrow. It's not going to have much of an effect. Everybody knows the recidivism rate on drug treatment is very, very high. Okay, and, and there's a reason for it. 
The real answer is not treating drug addiction. The real answer is stopping the flood of drugs into America. I told you many years ago I went to Malaysia. And I was shocked when I was driving in from the airport at Kuala Lumpur to see a gigantic billboard the size of an apartment building that said, uh, using drugs in Malaysia is punishable by death. It was very clear that there was a real campaign to stop the use of drugs in Malaysia. And they punished drug dealers by killing them. And there was a reason for it. Because they were near the Golden Triangle where drugs are produced. And they knew that the entire nation would be addicted to drugs unless they cracked down on the drug dealers. I don't hear anyone talking about any of these things, by the way. So now we're seeing a big scandal of Harvey Weinstein. When have you last heard about the scandal of the fact that he's been promoting violence in his movies from the get-go? And rampant sexuality in his movies from the get-go. You say, well, are you a prude? No. Do you want censorship? Uh, I'm not so sure I don't. How's that? I don't know. I grew up in a time where there was self-censorship. I grew up in a time where the film producers wouldn't dare produce this kind of uh, salacious material. And so there was no need for censorship at that time. I also grew up in a time when I remember my father again saying to me, have you noticed that in every movie with criminals, the criminals always die or go to jail at the end? I said, I didn't notice that. He said, well, it's the movies have to be produced like that, he said to me, because the government wants the message to go out that crime does not pay. I said, that makes sense. So you say, oh, that was terrible. What kind of freedom is that? That you're not letting the Harvey Weinsteins of the world show you that crime pays. We want freedom. We want total freedom in America. We want the Weinsteins to be able to show every little boy that it's good to be a criminal and you'll get away with it. And your friends who will kill themselves studying are the morons. That's the kind of freedom we want here. That's what we want in America today, to allow the Weinsteins of our time to run, uh, run r roughshod over the country, over the soul of the nation. No, no, I think the government's got to get, get involved in the movies, got to get involved in the drug epidemic, which uh, Trump says he's doing. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. More treatment? Big deal. Half the treatment facilities are owned by drug cartels, so far as I can tell. They get you coming and going. Well, look into the board of directors of drug treatment facilities. Why don't you see if there's any interlocking corporate directorships between uh, the treatment facility giants and the manufacturers of hard drugs. See if they're not sitting on pharmaceutical boards and on treatment boards. And then you'll understand why nothing will really happen. It could even be worse than that, for all I know. If I were writing the script, it would be much worse than that. But I'm not a script writer, I'm only a talk show host. I have a limited knowledge of everything. My limited knowledge, one man of seven billion has a very limited knowledge of the world. But with the limited knowledge that I have, I express it. It's that, you know, it's very interesting. I actually thought of that for the first time because if you're in the media, you get megalomaniac, you become a megalomaniac and you think that you know everything and you're smarter than everybody. And then when the microphone goes off or the Klieg lights go off and you got to get up in the morning and there you are again, the same exact worm that God made, the same thing made from that foul, foul drop. That same thing you are, and you got to get yourself up and wash your face and have your coffee or your chai or whatever you make to make yourself better than the next man. Not coffee, of course, if you're superior and you're a vegan. You wouldn't have something as evil as coffee. You have something like chai, some special drink only for you, made only for you at the 7,000-foot range, picked by dwarfs of a certain spiritual class. God forbid someone should touch the leaf that you're drinking who is impure. And then at night, after your work day is over, all you purity freaks, uh, you go to a nightclub till 4 o'clock in the morning and fill yourself with garbage. The next day, of course, you're a vegan again, drinking chai, lecturing everybody on white privilege and racism. And the cycle continues. There's another addiction in this country, which is an addiction to lies. The lie of white privilege. What a convenient way to hate white people. What a convenient, brilliant way to attack an entire race through racism and call yourself purer and holier than thou. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. As you know, my book, God, Faith, and Reason, will be released on November 14th. But here's the thing to remember, is this. The fact of the matter is, this is not a religious book. It's a quest. It's an odyssey. And I, in my book, I draw upon 
my experiences, my personal experiences of others with God and without God, and I share insights from over 40 years of notes from my own Bible that have provided me with solace and hope, and I'm sure that my faith journey will help readers find answers about God and many of life's difficult questions. Maybe you'll find solace in reading God, faith, and reason. It's all I can say. I'm not into organized religion. If I were, I would be very happy if those of you who go to a church on a regular basis or go to a synagogue on a regular basis were to explain to people that there's a multiplicity of opinions about God. But I don't want to talk about God. I know all you want to talk about is the indictment. I don't know if I'm going to do Mueller anymore. I know you want him to go. He's not going. He's not stepping down. No, Trump is not going to uh, dismiss him. If he does, if he does Trump's in, uh, going to be impeached. Trump can't do anything but let it play out. And what's going to happen here is they don't really want Paul Manafort. You know that. You mean, come on, let's be le uh, obvious. This is the way they went after people in organized crime. This is the standard operating procedure. They get anyone they can on anything. Then they flip that person to get the next one up the chain. Then they flip that one, then the next one up the chain. That, 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 till they, they go for the peasant avante, so to speak, look at the Bavalacci papers or whatever, and eventually try to bring down the whole. They don't achieve it. They never have achieved it. They've never gotten to the top. They never will get to the top. They never get to the bottom. All it does is just it satisfies the masses. We just want to see blood sport. All of us love this very much because it takes us out of our boring little lives. And also, we also must remember that I told you the average man has such a horrible life. The average person has such a horrible life, I should say today. I'm so sexist sometimes. I, I can't get used to it. I say the average man. There are women in the world. I came to understand that after many years of thinking about it. The average person in the world, shall I say the average humanoid in the world, leads such an ordinary life of desperation that when they see big people falling, it makes them feel good that they're not big. What they say is, aha, thank God I'm not well known. I'm safe. No one knows me. See what I'm saying? That's how that works. I went on the New York Post. They have a post. They have a video of a Democrat lawmaker from upstate New York uh, who broke down when a state trooper, a local cop, pulled her over for speeding. You will not believe her as she screams, I have PSD! I have PTSD! What are you doing to me? You can't believe this. Why did you single me out? I have PTSD. I'm an important legislator. I'm on the way to work. Who are you? What kind of cop are you? I'm going to fight this. This is a liberal woman especially in politics, to the, to the nth degree. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Serving filet mignon. High-end gulf shrimp. All the best we can gather from around the world. The real story is that Tony Podesta stepped down from his lobbying job. This is actually a bigger story uh, than Mueller's uh, phony indictment. Uh, and so we'll see how that plays out. I mean, Tony Podesta is a very big fish. He is the brother of a campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. And you can only ask yourself why. The answer is because he's about the next one to fall. Now, if you were Mueller and you were so roundly criticized by all fair-minded people for conducting a witch hunt, wouldn't you want to reach out and show the people that you're fair and that you're going to indict people on the other side as well? Yes, especially since, you know, it, it will never lead to an indictment of Hillary Clinton and the Uranium One scandal. They'll take down a, a small fish and a, and a fall guy and leave it at that and say, well, we, we did everything we could. We were as fair as we could be and blah, blah, blah. So this is the, this is the way the scenario is written. And, you know, you, you, just don't, you don't have to be a genius to see where this is going. I believe Tony Podesta is, is destined for, uh, well, that's up to Mueller what he's destined for. I got callers on every topic you can imagine. Phone number is 855-407-282. Of course, you think the big story is the indictment of Manafort, but most of you don't realize that Manafort only worked for Trump for three months, and the indictment has nothing to do with Russia. But this is how a smear campaign works. You indict as high up as you can, and then you imply through your friends like Wolf Blitzer, Rachel Madcow, and the others, that it is related to the Russia probe. And then you bring out the mad dog, Maxine Waters, who says, I'm waiting for the facts to come out, but I want impeachment. This is what's called a Stalinist regime in reverse. They're subject to a Stalinist in, 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 in inquiry here is what you're, what you're seeing. 
And I don't really want to do this all. If you think I'm going to do this all week, you better find another place for your ears. I'm not doing this all week. I'm already on strike against the whole Mueller job. I'm sick of it all. To me, it's nothing but dirty politics. It's that simple. They couldn't get Trump one way, so they're trying to get him another. They lost the election. They don't want to lose the election. They're trying to overturn the election. They want her to be president. So what, what else is new under the sun? This is the nation you wanted to live in? This is the world that you think is a liberal world to live in a world like this? I don't. I think it's the most illiberal world you could imagine. Let's take some calls. Kathy in Alaska, line four. Kathy, what's on your mind? I'm glad you're not going to uh, do this all week long. Um, I'd rather hear sages and saints telling their stories. Like it's, I assume your book is kind of like on that level. Well, no, it's not that I quote anyone else. I don't go to their sources and talk about what other sages said. No, no. It's all my, no, it's, okay. in my books, no, no, the book is all my observations, my glimpses of God, no one else's. It's one man's odyssey. Someone said it's like the missing book of, uh, the, a missing book from the Old Testament, one of the old prophets. I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but, you know, if I don't, who will? Since I'm invisible on Fox News and anywhere, anywhere else. Isn't it interesting that you listen to me on this show? And you can't see me anywhere else. Why is that? Why am I such a bad guy? You're not a bad guy. I'm not, I'm not saying that your book would be others' words. Your book is like a sage telling a story. They didn't sit with the book. They sit and t they sat and talked about their experience. All right. Well, that no. Truthfully, Kathy, that is true. And you are getting a free copy of God, Faith, and Freedom. And I thank you for being such a good sport. 855-407-282. I don't want to talk about Manafort. I've done it for two hours. It's enough already. Isn't there something else we can talk about? Jim is very busy. He's doing call screening. He is doing board operating, and he's taking down the names of those who win a book. Other than that, he's trying to breathe in between all of it and uh, keep his eyes focused. But that's the nature of the business today that we're in. One man does all. One man does all behind the screen. Jim should get a Nobel Prize for the pressure he is under. And I'm trying to do the best I can, uh, given the skeleton crew that I have right now, uh, um, to deal with. Uh, let us see what we're talking about now. KSFO Rich Line 3, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thank you for finally getting through it. I, I appreciate you. I'm a fan. Uh, I've actually died four times in my life. And what I can tell you is, you know, I, I deal with a lot of stuff. Basically, I agree with you when I was listening on, on your line. Uh, there is no organized religion on this rock that has all the answers. And any that say that they do are full of it. Uh, multiple times. Well, uh, tell, uh, oh, hold on, Rich. I'm very curious. You said you died four times without spending a lot of time. Okay. Once under, what cir and under what circumstances did you die? All right. Once was a surfing accident. I was under the water for more than 12 minutes. Uh, my friends were out there that I came up out in the shipping lane, 200 feet of water. I was down in the mud, came up. Uh, they've been out there for 10, 15 minutes, no water in my lungs, etc. Another one, uh, a hospital in Petaluma, whatever. Uh, I was, uh, they had me out because of some messed up stuff. I, uh, I saw myself. They had me out before I went into the operating room. My consciousness comes to, and I see myself in the left room. I'm flatlined. I, again, I feel the hand on my shoulder, the same voice. This is the same voice every time. Tell me I'm going to be okay. And I'm back in my body. A lot of pain that time. Uh, another, well, there's, there's several others, but they're, they're kind of similar. It's always like the same voice, the same. And I, I'm not like a hardcore religious. You know, but Rich, I have to ask a question. If, if you died four times and came back from the dead four times, and you believe there's an all-powerful benevolent righteous god or spirit that saved you why would this benevolent or righteous spirit have killed you four times oh it's i don't think it killed me i think it, you know the, the circumstances on why i got there was my choice to go surfing when the rip was real bad it was my choice to be in a couple other circumstances that i shouldn't have done uh and why why i'm saved i mean i i know myself to be a decent guy i have a certain set of values like, uh, you know, our, our society today, you know, thievery is okay. You know, hey, people do it. You know, I'm not that way. I have, but... but... Okay, so Rich, just for the sake of the large audience that's listening right now, when you were down there for 12 minutes, what did you see? Actually, uh, I remember getting drug out 
like, because uh, the rip was bad, the sand going too much. And next thing I know, I wake up in this, like, really thick ooze. And I just started swimming. Yes, there was a light. I didn't think of it as the proverbial light. I just started swimming. And then I, I, I panic. I go, I'm not breathing. And the But did all of these experiences change your life in any way and make you behave differently? Actually, unfortunately, not too much. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest about that. I, I, I am who I am. I've always tried to be a decent person. I don't know whether that's an innate thing. Uh, my yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe it's you're lucky, lucky that you had great parents and a good upbringing, and you're you're a good, decent person. Well, so I, look, hey, Bray Rich. All I can say is I have nothing to say, but I am sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason, which is my odyssey. Every uh, few pages, there's a biblical quote from the Old Testament, such as this on page one forty three. They are become as well fed horses, lusty stallions. Everyone nayeth after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Jeremiah 5, 8, and 9. So <laughs> the reason I took some of the quotes out of my Old Testament and put them into my book, and some of them are full-page quotes out of Isaiah and whatnot, is for the people who are not really religious, they're going to get a taste of the Bible. It's kind of a light way to get a taste of the Bible while reading a secular book. It's an interesting trick I've evolved, I've evolved here to get you to look at some of the sayings from the prophets of the Bible as you read my book. I'm, I'm hoping God rewards me for bringing his word to you through my trickery. Surely our, di our diseases he did bear and our pains he carried, whereas we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Isaiah 53, 4. You know, Isaiah was one of my favorite prophets. If he were alive today, he'd be a great talk show host. And if men strive together and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart, and yet no harm follow, he shall be surely fined, according as the woman's husband shall lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine, Exodus 21, 20, Exodus 21, 22. A lot of our common law, whether you know it or not, actually derives from the Old Testament. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, a lot of our common law is not derived from Harvard Law School. It's derived from the Old Testament. It's, a lot of it is in there. For my people is foolish, they know not me. They are Scot they are sottish children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Jeremiah 4.22, he would have made a great talk show host, by the way. So you want to talk only about the Manafort, the charges, the this, the that. You think I'm going to do it all week? Are you kidding? I can't do it all week. I'm not going to do the God book all week. I'm not going to do that either. I'm holding my fire on the God book until the week of publication. And then I open up with all 16-inch guns from the book. And I will preach to you. And you know that for these 23 years this March, 23 years on the radio, I began in a little itty local talk show host in 1994 after many other careers. And uh, it was on a local station, KSFO. And I revolutionized talk radio in the Bay Area because I was the only conservative ever heard. in the No one ever heard anything like it. Well, there were a few great guys around, don't get me wrong, and they were pushing their message, but no one had heard it done like I did it. Let's put it to you that way. And so for decades I've been teaching my political faith of borders, language, and culture to millions of you on my nationally syndicated radio show, The Savage Nation. But I've never given you, my audience, a look into my religious faith and my ideas about the Judeo-Christian foundation of the American culture that I have fought for all of my life to preserve. And, and as I'm telling you this, our Judeo-Christian culture is being attacked day and night. And whenever you see things, a little story such as came out of Washington, D.C., one of the oldest churches in Virginia had a pew in which George Washington and his family prayed and a little plaque over that pew where they sat. And these idiots who are running the church took down that memorial, a little plaque over that pew, because they said it was unwelcoming, that it offended some people in the congregation. What I would say is throw them out of the congregation. You're going to a congregation where the founding father of the United States of America sat and prayed, and that makes you uncomfortable? Then what the hell are you doing? I don't know what's legal anymore, what's illegal. Go back to the filthy country you came from. If you don't like my nation, go back where you came from and go worship mud and stones. Go worship uh, chicken feathers. Why doesn't anyone stand up to these terrorists? Why are we living through a tyranny of the minority right now? Why are we the majority? 
living with this tyranny of the minority. When did it happen that we became so cowed by them? Every time I open up a newspaper and I see a big mouth trying to tear something down, why is it an obese, ugly woman with tattoos all over her body? She's uncomfortable with George Washington? Well, what country is she comfortable in? What faith or faithlessness is she comfortable with? If it is not with America, then she should get out of America. It's that simple. You're not going to change this country's faith, I can tell you that, honey. If you're one of those whistleblowers who likes to tear things down and beat people up all in the name of diversity, let me tell you how this ends. Not well for you. I have lived through other cases of mass hysteria in this country. I've seen it a very long period of time. And every one of these diseases of mass hysteria eventually burns itself out. Just as the NFL is burning itself out by taking a knee. And bars around the country are putting up signs, as we heard in the last hour, saying no NFL here. That, too, will burn itself out. And those uneducated, overpaid goons will soon learn who pays their tab. It's that simple. Have faith in America. Have faith in God. Because in the end, we will prevail. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. When the lights go down. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Look. I know many of you liberals are salivating and say, aha, they finally got him. I hate Trump. He's going down. This lesson that you are going to learn from Mueller's overreach will be a lesson in the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment, which you liberals have so aptly tossed us by tossing cases of drug dealers who have been found with trunk loads of cocaine, only to have the case dismissed because the cops did not have a proper search warrant to open that trunk, even though they find 30 kilos of coke. Many cases have been thrown out on the illegal search and seizure business that liberal lawyers have uh, specialized in teaching us what the Fourth Amendment is. The Fourth Amendment protects Paul Manafort as well. And I've read pretty carefully from legal sources that Manafort's constitutional rights were over, were stepped upon by the aggressive campaign of Mueller. When they broke down Manafort's door at 5 in the morning, and you better pray it doesn't happen to you tomorrow, and you may scream, but I'm a liberal, but I'm a lawmaker, and I got to go to work. You're bothering me. I'm going to call it. I got PTSD. Well, when they break your door down for stealing highway funds in San Francisco, for example, or for God knows what else you've been stealing in the cities around America, all of you good legislators you know, on the Democrat side, I can guarantee you, you will get a lawyer who will say that your Fourth Amendment rights have been violated if they violate the client attorney privilege and take papers related to you and your lawyer. But apparently Manafort's people, excuse me, Mueller's people took paperwork between himself and his lawyer that had nothing to do with this case, violating his Fourth Amendment rights. So pay close attention to this case. It will be a great lesson in the Fourth Amendment. Now, apparently... Maxine Waters never studied the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Here is a woman so evil in her head that she says, I want the facts to come out, but I want to encourage impeachment. This is something that occurs in a totalitarian dictatorship. How can you excuse her when you hear clip seven? Listen very carefully to it now. The fact that this president uh, has said that he wanted to lift sanctions, the fact that we passed law that said uh, strengthen those sanctions against Russia, and he has not implemented the law that we passed, he won't say a negative word about Putin. There's enough there for responsible, reasonable members of Congress to talk about impeachment. Why don't they impeach Maxine Waters for trying to encourage World, World War III? If you have a mad dog member of Congress who continuously wants war with a superpower based upon nothing, you then try to remove that person because she is a danger to all living things on the planet. Do you understand how crazy she is? She wants the facts to come out, but I want to encourage impeachment. 
When did you liberals become Nazis and fascists? Did it happen in the blink of an eye? Have you lost your sense? Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.